Better? Good? You came before, did you? No. Yeah. So, to continue with the same topic we had about the infrastructure of a human being, about which I told you that God has made this infrastructure very beautiful. Even in nature, if you see, anything that is living, see a tree, if you look at this tree, you'll be amazed how the different channels that takes the sap upwards are so beautifully placed that there is no problem for water to rise. The suction in the water takes place because the sun shines and the water is sucked in. The nature is so nicely built up, absolutely harmonious. When it is winter time, the leaves drop out because the Mother Earth requires nutrition and the leaves are not getting so much of sunshine, so there should be less surface exposed. The same nutrition is taken up again and again in the spring you find again the beautiful leaves breaking through. It's so beautifully worked out, the whole situation, the whole universe is so beautifully made and the infrastructure is so made that it receives all the blessings of the Divine without any difference. It rains and the nature receives it. If you ever been to a forest, to a densest forest that you could think of, you'll be amazed how clean it is. The fragrance of that place is so clean, nothing stagnates. how it operates, and how it works out, through sunshine, through rain, through wind. In this whole universe, now man is created, which is a problem. The infrastructure of man can be ruined by him, it's only he can do it. The trees cannot ruin themselves, can they? They stand up like witnesses, they just give, just give. Even when they die, they give their wood. When they live, they give their flowers, they give their shade, they give their beauty. They are giving, giving, giving all the time. And the one who takes, is this great epitome of creation, the human being. He is the recipient of all that. Then he has got intelligence to receive everything from that and to use it for one's own purpose. That's how we are exploiting, I would say exploiting, the blessings of nature. That's good. That's what God wanted, that we should really have the blessings of nature. 
that you are the monarchs of this universe, so everything stands in attention for your needs. Why man on his own goes mad with his extreme behavior? He doesn't think of his infrastructure which he can ruin. The problem is only the man can ruin that. Not only that, but also the outer structure which is that atmosphere. You send one man to a forest, it's all right. If you send two hundred tigers to a forest, it's all right. But if you send ten men to a forest, finished, all the beauty is finished. On one side, the sense of beauty only human beings have got. The sense of understanding cleanliness only human beings have got. So they are the only enjoyers. They are the only enjoyers of all. They are supposed to enjoy all this, but there is something lacking in them which doesn't give the full enjoyment. When you look at a tree, today cherry blossom everywhere, then the thought starts coming, how much they must have paid for this tree, how many years it must have taken, all these mundane type of questions come to your mind. But supposing by any chance, if no thoughts come into your mind, you just see witness, good witness, then the joy that they are trying to give you and express will be complete with itself. That state we have not yet achieved. Always we have thoughts, thoughts which are all artificial, thoughts that make you some sort of an imaginary person. Or if you don't go to the subtler side, a very gross person. It's not reality. Imagination is not reality and also the grossness is not. Like a poet might say that what a flower is there and it's beautiful and that and that and all sorts of stories they may build up about a flower. And a person who is not imaginary might say, I don't know, how much it will cost, how to put it down, what is the use of this, how it can be economic. <coughs> Poetry is, of course, such a subtler side of life, no doubt. And thank God Hampstead had so many great poets. But still is imaginary for other people. What you look at and you think may not be true for others. For example, a person like Blake who wrote all poetry, nobody understood him. To understand him also you have to have realization, otherwise you can't understand him at all. So whatever is rendered on gross level or all imaginary level by the nature, cannot be enjoyed by, enjoyed by human beings to its full extent, cannot be. We think so. Look at the economic laws as they are, that wants in general are not satiable. It means that's not satisfying at all. I mean it says, it confesses. Today you want to have a car, all right, you have a car. Then you want to have an aeroplane, all right, you have an aeroplane then you want to have some other sort of a thing. There's no end to it. So
so it proves that the joy that you get out of material things also are not satisfied because at the state at which human beings are, they cannot enjoy. They cannot enjoy anything, though they are supposed to enjoy everything because they only have the capacity to enjoy. But there is something lacking in them by which they cannot enjoy it. And what is that quality? What is that state? Because the connection for extracting joy has to be with the Spirit. Spirit is the connection which emits joy. There is no other way to enjoy life without remorse. To be connected first with Spirit is the only way that we enjoy, because joy doesn't have double side. Like people go for, a, say, for a ballroom dancing, supposed to be enjoying. They come home and a big fight starts. God knows what they have enjoyed for. The enjoyment of life is only possible if we could get connected to the Spirit. And that connection to the Spirit is only possible if you sprout into that, you become the Spirit. As Christ has said in very simple words that you are to be born again, very simple. Looks very simple. But how? You are to be baptized, but how? Say, I go to a theosophical college or some sort of a college, and they say, now you have got a right to baptize. Now to any intelligent man does it appeal that way? Can it be possible? Baptism, if it's a living process in which you have to get connected, connected with the Spirit, then what do you do about it? That means you have to achieve a state of mind where you become the Spirit. That connection has to be established. If that connection is not established, then you cannot be a twice born by certifying yourself. I've seen many people, they said, Mother, I'm twice born. I said, how do you say you are twice born? What is the certificate you have got of being twice born? You cannot just certify yourself. This is not a self-certification. Supposing a dog says, I'm a human being. Will you accept? No, I mean, he can go about. He can go about and say that I am a human being. But he doesn't become. He's a state, he's a quality which is in evolution has to be shown. It's an evolutionary quality. A fish which has to become a tortoise has to become a tortoise. She can't just say that, oh, I am a tortoise, oh, I am a tortoise. This is where human ego comes in. By saying something you do not become. And this is one of the basic things we must know, that we have to become in actuality, in reality, we have to face up to it and not believing in something because it is said. Anybody can say anything, what does it matter? You see, you raise this tongue and put it under your palate and say what you like. What does it take to write a book? You take some printer and you give him something to write. You can write any trash, anything so-called. You can write about God, this, that, and talk big, give sermons, uh, have big organizations, but it is nothing of the kind. Yes, 
even supposing you have some animals, like dogs especially, you see, I would say that. Now you make them dress up like little babies and this and that, make them dance and in a circus you might find they may become little bit like human beings, you know, they might carry letters or may bring your children from the school, I mean they can do lots of such things. But will you call them human beings by any chance? I'm not saying the difference is so much. <laughs> but one has to understand one thing, that we have not yet become the Spirit in all humility. Let us accept this fact that we have to become the Spirit. Now supposing that is the only source of joy, if that is your real property within you, if that is the thing you have to achieve, Supposing for that you have become a human being, then must you not all do that? It's logical that life has no meaning without it, you see. You make a candle and you put a wig in that and do everything with it and when there is darkness you say, what are we to do now? Enlighten that light. <coughs> it's so simple. The whole existence itself will have no meaning if we do not become the Spirit. We all have to become the Spirit, otherwise we are useless. We are good for nothing, our lives has no meaning. Now when somebody says like that, I could be another, what you call hypocrite or could be what? you call them false, fake guru, I could be like that myself. Telling you big stories could be possible, all right? Anybody could be like that. But why cheat yourself is the point. Let anybody try to cheat you, but you don't cheat yourself. You accept one simple point that you have to become the Spirit in all humility. And that is one wish a seeker should have. I have known seekers, they try all kinds of things, like a gentleman had a very bad dissenter and asked him, what have you been doing? He said, there's some Rampa Shampa man, he's written some books of the third eye and I'm going to operate and my third eye is going to come out. I said, what? Who has told you that? He said, there are books after books on this. I said, really? Well, how did this fellow do that thing? By operating here, if you <laughs> get the third eye, <laughs> And he was doing all kinds of nonsensical things, believing in that man, and his this center itself was ruined. Well, I said, but see the fellow, what is he doing himself? You see, that's the best part of it. See, God has given us not only brains but wisdom. God has given us wisdom and we should use that wisdom and judge these people on these lines to see what they are telling. Most of them are ruining your infrastructure. I would not care for any one of them if they were just smuggling money or making you poor, doesn't matter, in the kingdom of God doesn't matter. All right, if they want money, give them away, finished. There are many smugglers, thugs and robbers and what you call them, swindlers, all sorts of people are in this world, you see. There are thousand and one words to describe them. But they are spoiling your infrastructure is the problem. And when they spoil that infrastructure, then this happening of Kundalini awakening takes time. There's a problem. People develop diseases, they develop emotional problems, mental problems, all kinds of problems with all these things. Actually you must know that if you are a seeker and if you seek, you have to become absolutely a normal person. 
all your abnormalities must drop out. If they don't drop out, then you should know that you still have some horns coming out. But people don't understand that being abnormal is going down. Anybody who thinks that he can paint his hair or wear a funny dress, walk about, he'll achieve God, I don't know how to tell them that this is not the way. <laughs> or anybody who thinks that he behaves in a funny manner or shouts and screams and uh, says the prayers very loudly on the street and do all these shows, will go to God, is not possible. Only way is to keep your wisdom intact, your steadfast faith that you are the Spirit and God is compassion and He will make you the Spirit. This is the only thing that is needed in a seeker. But without wisdom, when you try any one of these things, then you have to go a very round circle to come to the same point, but completely bruised, wounded and sometimes absolutely sick to death. The problem today is very complex. Your infrastructure is spoiled not only by these pseudo people, also by so many other things which we have taken to. the society, the family life, the addictions, the habits, and so many things have crawled into us and have woven such a net that to get out of it is not possible. There's only one way to get out. Once, I had, as a child, I had read a story about some birds. A net was cast and so many birds, you see, doves, they were caught in the net. And they discovered that we are misled, misguided. They saw some grains and they were misguided. So how to get rid out of the net was impossible for them. It's an impossibility. One person cannot get out. <coughs> One person tries to get out, others get more entangled and he gets even worse. So what to do? They all said, why not we all fly out with the net itself? And then with our beaks we cut out this net and we'll be freed. But first get out from here, put us, put our energy together, all of us, and let's fly out. And that's what they did. They spread their wings, all of them put together and took off. And off they went and they were freed. Today's Sahaja Yoga is that kind of a trick. One person cannot work it out. It's impossible. If one person has to do it, it's an impossibility. He has to go and live in a cave permanently. Any one person, even endowed with powers like Christ, comes on this earth, is crucified, finished. Three years, is crucified. 
nobody understood him. So we have to have many more. get out of this net which is created through the efforts of the pseudo people, through our stupidity we can say, our wrongdoings, misguidances, all kinds of problems which are against evolution. One has to become a whole group to lift up the society higher so that you can really get rid of the shackles of this bondage. Could be there are some gurus in India who are good gurus, who are realized souls, who have taken many lives to be realized, they are very clean people, all that is there, no doubt. But there are very few and they all live in the forest, hiding in the caves. And even I told them, why don't you come down from your hidings? They said, it's better we are safe here. Their legs are bo broken, hands are broken or some... You see, people have never tolerated. So according to them, after twelve years, I think during all my stay in England perhaps, they'll be better off to come down. People won't hurt them so much. One fellow was beaten up so much that all his back pulled was finished. So real gurus are just hiding and the ones who are out are just money-making propositions, simple thing as that. Because they know how to pamper your ego, to play upon your weaknesses, to make you more embedded into that net, into that mire and take full advantage of you. That's why they are it. People don't like it. People get identified with that kind of gene. But that's not freedom. Freedom is when you really get your own powers which are within you. You have got your own powers, you have to be your own guru. You must reach that point where from where you guide yourself in such a way that the guiding lines become part and parcel of you. That means in your central nervous system, in your conscious mind you must feel the existence of the Spirit. This is what is the evolutionary process. This is what you have to achieve and all other talks are absolutely of no value. Let us face it, there's no flowery talk needed for it, nothing of the kind, it's a doing. Supposing I tell you, all right, if you have to make such and such cake, you mix this, mix that, mix that, mix that. It's all right. But when you mix that, you find a poison is created out of that. Another person can say, all right, I'll mix this, mix that, and you have the cake. And there's no cake, nothing. So what do you eat? So all these talks, and all these organizations and everything has no meaning of any kind. It doesn't empower you to be the Spirit. I'm not here to denounce anybody or to make anybody low or anything, but what I think that they are wasting their energy and your energy and their energy. 
Why don't they accept that for years together they have been doing all this nonsense and they have achieved nothing? My main concern is that why don't they see it? Why are they so mass-minded? Why don't they see it clearly that these people haven't achieved anything and what are we going to achieve? What my father did, my grandfather did, great-grandfather did, I'm doing the same thing and I have not achieved anything as they have not achieved anything, why not? Every scientific-minded person should think like that. Every religious person should think that this religion, if it has any meaning, it's not giving any fruits, what is written in them. In the Islam, if you read, I don't know if you people have read Qur'an, but it's written that there will be a day of resurrection. That resurrection has to take place, has been said by every one of them. But what about that? Nobody wants to talk. They'll only talk about the day of the doom, because then they can have a nice money, you see, frightening you. The day of the doom is coming, better give money. as if God understands your bank accounts. You haven't paid any money so far. Every such artificial type of thing is accepted by reasonably wise, sensible, educated, mature people. and they find it impossible to get out of it. This is a clubbing, it's, it's a mass thing. No, you are an individual just now to think for yourself. God has made you an individual. You are like a sh egg which is an individual, we can say. You have to think about it, you have to judge about it, to find out. And then you become the collective and that means you become aware of your collectivity, aware. Collectivity doesn't mean mass reaction. Like ten people start dancing, oh, that's a very good cult, you know, what do they do? They just stand up and dance, I mean for that. How much you have to pay? Only ten pounds, that's all. You just go there, take out your clothes and dance, finished. You get to God. Very simple method. And people believe in it. I tell you, people believe in it. They believe in all these tall stories. The simple thing they have to see, have we become our spirit? A simple question we should ask ourselves, is it for our spirit? Is there any report established with that divine, with that divine power? Have we felt that divine power anywhere? And when we are not keeping our mind steady on this point, we can be ruined. This all this structure gets spoiled, which is a very delicately made, beautifully made. God has made it the best of all, better than all the trees put together, all the animals put together. Everything is the epitome of His creation is man, except for one thing, that He has been given freedom to choose. It had to go. That had to be done. If you don't give freedom at this stage, how can you enter into complete freedom? If you do not know how to use your freedom, supposing a man who doesn't know how to use his freedom, he goes about daggers, you see, killing this, killing that, killing that person, or starts killing himself, it can be both ways. There are some who start killing others or start killing themselves. Will you give him a freedom? Even in a normal way we don't give him freedom to go about killing others or killing himself. So he has to have idea. 
of using his freedom towards himself and towards others. And that freedom we have to use. And if we have used it properly, wisely, then there's no problem because it's made so beautifully. I told you how Kundalini is placed, how she is placed at the safest point and how she is coiled up and how the centers are kept so subtly within your medulla oblongata, in your spinal cord, how it is protected and how this Agya Chakra is placed between pituitary and pineal on the optic chiasma point and how the Sahasrara is made so beautifully is amazing. Only thing, the light of Spirit has to come to enlighten all that. That's all. Nothing more needed. You have to just choose that sensibly that you have to become the Spirit. You cannot force on the organization of God anything. He is on His own, His organization on His own. Only thing you can do is to enter into His kingdom and become a part and parcel of that blissful domain. You would never like to change it either. It is so wonderful. It's so protective. It's so loving. It's so gentle so kind, so compassionate, that you would hate to change that organization. But we do, we try to organize God in. For people who think that that is the ultimate you have to seek, it's all arranged to enter into the kingdom of God. The time has come. This is the day of resurrection. These are the days of resurrection. What Christ did, there are many people, I read the other day one book saying that He never resurrected Himself. These human beings, I must say. They scientifically, they prove, scientifically, can you imagine? Now how can you prove scientifically? I don't understand. According to them, He was he didn't die. Of course he cannot die, he's an eternal being, I know that, that part is correct. But he never died. He died the way a divine has to die, but he resurrected himself as the divine has to resurrect. He definitely resurrected himself. But the scientists were not there to see. Then he descended again. That's a different point altogether. But He definitely resurrected His Divine Body when He had such a beautiful, confident personality after that, that wherever He went He left a great imprint on you. And this is the trouble that they try to prove everything scientifically you cannot prove Christ's resurrection scientifically. That's why you cannot deny it either. What He did it on the gross level at that time has to happen in a subtle level within you. That He has done. That's why they say you have to pass through Him. He has done that for you. He has really done it. And we have to see that happening within us. Not by saying that now we follow Christ, all right, you have a, one big flag. Followers of Christ, you see, we are all Christian soldiers walking and we believe in Christ and we are all resurrected. No, you are not. You are not. At the most, if you are a good Christian or a good Hindu or a good Muslim, good, again I say then you are well balanced for your resurrection.
But if you are not even that, then it's a problem for me. Problem for you. But if you have been a good Jew or a good Christian or a good Hindu in the sense that you have kept your sustenance all right, you have been a normal person, you have gone through the central path and you have kept to the central path of life, you are not an extremist, not a person who does anything abnormal, is a normal person, then you are very good for realization. It's that simple as that. But the way people have carried this simple method of organizing people into better life, into something so absurd like hating each other, killing each other or all sorts of things, you know. I mean, it has nothing to do with God, believe Me. And we are the chosen ones and we are the best and we are the selected. This is self-certificate. You see, if I say I am the graduate of the Cambridge University, how long can I be fool myself and others? Which I am not. In the same way, we have to be really, really get our certificate from ourselves that we are reborn, not from anybody else. So we boiled, boiled down to this point that we have to be really, really very honest with ourselves because it is our loss, nobody else's, that so far we have not achieved that state of spirit and that in all humility we are going to achieve it, we have to achieve it, we have to accept that this should happen to us. This is so simple, it's so simple and so natural. It's just in the event that at this time it had to happen. It's very simple thing, there is no complication if you have not complicated yourself much. But even if you have, the Divine Power knows how to disentangle you and work it out. This is the blessing of the Divine where you become the Spirit and then you reach your Absolute from where there is no doubt about it. If you want to know what happens is that you just start feeling a cool breeze blowing into your hands or from your hands. And then you ask a question, is there God? And the breeze is much more. If you ask about a tug, is he a good man? It stops. The rapport is established with your spirit, which speaks to you as cool breeze in the hand. This cool breeze in the hand is the energy of your spirit flowing by which your diseases get cured, you can cure the diseases of others. You can raise the Kundalini of others and give them realization and you can enjoy the beauty of nature, not thinking about it or grossly valuing it, but just enjoying it in a full way. This is the short and sweet, but it's such a long story, started thousands of years back, and today it is just reaching its climax. The fruit is just going to be formed. It's just the blossom time has come for this story. And if 
the seekers cooperate, I am sure it will work out. I have all the hopes. May God bless you. Have you any questions for me? No questions? Why don't you come? There are lots of seats here. All of you can come and sit down. Come now. You do not stand all the way. Children should sit in the first row. That's your child. Good. So born realized. <laughs> so many great children are born in this country. I don't know how many understand it. He or it is she. Hello. <laughs> she wished me outside. Hmm. Now, this was the gentleman, poor thing, he has to look after the child, is it? Let him bring the child. Children don't trouble. Just bring them in. We like them to be in. They just keep quietly. They enjoy it. Yes. Why keep the child? These are all born realized children to you. They won't trouble you. Sit down. They'll be very happy here. Leave them alone. Hello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come along. Let them play. Let them play. Just let them play. You see, they know what to do. They're busy people. They know what to do. They're busy people. They relaxed. <laughs> No question, really? Sure? No question? All right. So now only one question could be that how to do it? Who will bell the cat? And it's very simple. How do you sprout a seed? In the same way, it is done. As you have seen there, that the hands denote all the centers, five, six and seven centers. There's book also, handbook, which you can take it and see for yourself. Now some of the people I've seen when they take the book, you see, they read it and they get worried about something. Whatever is written in that book is the truth. Now, we have tried to keep away lots of it from people because they want to have the truth what they want to see themselves, you see. Like some people hear only what they want to hear, you see, the rest they don't hear. But whatever was necessary to be told has been told in that book. We should not frighten you in any way or should not bother you. You just see the book and read it if you want and see for yourself whether it is true or not. But just do not get worried about that, it's a wrong attitude because I am talking about the realm which you have never known before. This is the area which is unknown to you. 
So if you are entering into that area which is unknown to you, you need not just get upset about it, but see for yourself whatever is written in that book is true or not. Though we have kept out lots of things from there, not to upset you, because people get upset with anything. Even if they see a candle, they get upset. Why there is a candle? I said, now what to do? If electric light is there, is all right, but no candle. If they see this, they say, why this? See, everything can make you upset. You have ideas, you see, that a person who is going to give you realization should be sitting in some black place, you see, all covered with two horns coming out. <laughs> That's not the thing. I have to be the most normal person, isn't it? Otherwise you won't accept. So all these ideas you have about people, or some people think that a person who is such and such, should be of this height, of this width, of this face, of this, that. All this is your own imagination. So we have to keep ourselves open because this realm you have to get into and see for yourself. Just keep yourself open and see for yourself. Now you have got these five centers, six and seven centers in your hand. Now I am telling you this, but it doesn't mean that I'm forcing on you something or a brainwashing is there, but the centers are there. You see, if you go to a doctor, he'll tell you about things in the same way. I'm telling you that there are seven centers. These are the basic centers within us, basic. And these centers are shown here. Did you, somebody talk here, Gavi? Yes. So they are shown on here. Now when you put your hands towards Me like this, these sympathetic centers get activated. Just like as you put the seed in a particular manner, it sprouts. It's just like that, there's nothing. So you have to just put the hands. Now some people have an objection even for that. Now you have come all the way for your Realization. What is the harm for putting hands like this? What is the harm? But even they have objection for that. But if a guru is there, they'll bow to him one thousand and one time, give him five hundred pounds and again bow to him, and go back into lunatic asylum. <laughs> I mean, I've met many like that. But if you tell them, just put your hands like this, because after all the energy has to flow. Apart from that, you have to ask for it. It cannot be forced, because you are a free person. You are a free person not to have it or to have it, all right? But if you have to have it, I mean if you don't want to have it, well and good, then we have nothing to do with you. We don't want to waste our energy with people who don't want to have it. Just we do not want to waste our energy because why should we? If you don't want to have it, it cannot be forced, you see. It's not a horse that you can put in the mouth and the horse eat. It's not like that because the taste of this you have never known. This is a new area into which you have to enter, that is your spiritual area. For that, you have to understand how to get to. And for that, even a small thing like putting the hands, if people don't want to do it, means they, don't, they, they are not seekers at all. There's nothing to be frightened. Kundalini doesn't trouble anyone. We have had thousands of people realize nobody had any problem, nothing. On the contrary, you feel much better and cured. Just close your eyes, put both the feet on the ground. That also has a meaning. So when I say put both the feet, it has a meaning. I won't tell you anything that is not necessary, because I have to gain nothing out of it. It's better to take out if possible, but if they are there, it doesn't matter. But you see, they just little bit, you know, too many things if there are, then sometimes they do. And even the tight things in the waist, if the waist is very tight, physically, then it's not proper, you can just loosen it a little bit. But it's, with some people the Kundalini shoots off so fast that whatever may be the type of way you are sitting or the way you are, whatever you are doing, it just shoots off. Now, put your hands towards Me like this 
and close your eyes. Keep your eyes shut. That is very important to keep your eyes shut. Because the Kundalini, when she rises over the Agya, she dilates your pupils. And if it is not closed, she won't rise. Just keep your eyes shut. It would work out. Keep your eyes shut, please. Just keep your eyes shut. This is the chance of lies not of one life. Know that. This is what you have been seeking in all your lives and you have to have it, you have to get it. You must get your own power. Close your eyes. 